This lesson deals with the overdamped natural response of a series RLC circuit. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 7 starting at page 37. In our last video we talked about the three forms of natural response of a series RLC circuit. What we're going to look at in this lesson is the overdamped case. This is the case where alpha is greater than omega naught, where alpha and omega naught were defined on page 35 of the chapter 7 notes. The formula solution for I of t is A1 times e to the S1t plus A2 e to the S2t. The values of S1 and S2 you can find the formulas for on page 35, and they depend on R7 and L and C. What we need to do now is figure out the values of A1 and A2. If we evaluate our equation for I of t at t equals 0 plus, it would be the same as the value at 0 minus. This is the initial condition of the inductor. But plugging in t equals 0 or 0 plus, it's going to make e to the s1t equal to e to the 0, which is equal to 1. And likewise for e to the s2t with t equal to roughly 0, we would also have e to the 0, which is 1. So we know that a1 plus a2 would be equal to the initial condition of the current in the inductor. We have relationships between the derivative of the current and the voltage across the inductance. So let's take a look at differentiating our current Evaluating that at t equals 0 plus. So again, differentiating e to the s1t is going to be s1 e to the s1t, and we multiply that by a1. And then the derivative of e to the s2t is s2 e to the s2t times a2. Now plugging in t equals 0, or 0 plus, it's going to make this term basically equal to 1, and this is equal to 1. So what we have then is that the derivative of i of t at t equals 0 plus is equal to a1 s1 plus a2 s2. The derivative of the current is related to the voltage across the inductance divided by the inductance. Now the voltage across the inductance can change instantaneously, but this is also part of the series RLC circuit. So let's go back to page 33 and take a look at that circuit one more time. So the voltage across the inductance, I could solve for that by going around the loop this way. So the rise in voltage would equal the drops around the loop. So, so V sub L is equal to minus V sub R thevenin minus V sub C. Let's go back to page 38. And that's that expression right here. We're dividing by L. The value of the voltage across the thevenin resistance at zero plus is equal to the current I of, of the inductance or I of the series loop times R thevenin. But that's also equal to the value at zero minus. Of course, the value of the capacitor voltage cannot jump instantaneously, and so it's also equal to the value at zero minus. And these were the two initial conditions that we had with our circuit. So let's take a look at an example where I've got a R thevenin, an L and a C, and a switch, that the initial condition on this coil will be zero amps, and suppose that we charge this capacitor up to 12 volts. In other words, put a battery across here and then remove it. Let's let this switch close at t equals zero, and then we've got our series RLC circuit could apply the equations we just had developed. With this value of 4.7k, our value of alpha is R7 and over 2L, it turns out to be 47,000 radians per second. And omega naught we'd calculated before with the 50 millihenries and the 0.2 microfarads was 10 kiloradians per second. So again here we have alpha greater than omega naught. These are the conditions for being overdamped. So now we can calculate S1 and S2. So going back to page 35, our equation for S1 and S2. S1 is minus alpha plus the square root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared. And alpha is 47,000 and omega naught is 10,000. That turns out to be a minus 1.076 kiloradians per second. And then S2 would just have an opposite sign here. And that turns out to be minus 92.924 kiloradians per second. We have a formula for the derivative of the current in our series circuit at zero plus using the initial conditions we had at zero minus. So our inductance is 50 millihenries. The initial current that we had in this example was zero, but we put initial condition on the capacitor of 12 volts. It turns out to be minus 240 amps per second would be the units on that. Go back to our derivations on page 37, and then we had that the current in our series loop at zero plus is the same as zero minus. And this is, of course, the in current in the inductance. That's equal to A1 plus A2. And the derivative evaluated at zero plus 
is minus 240, and then we had shown that that was equal to A1S1 plus A2S2. So I'm putting the value of S1 and the value of S2. So I have two equations and two unknowns, and a lot of ways you could solve that. We could put it in matrix form. Here, zero is equal to A1 plus A2, and that minus 240 is equal to A1 times minus 1.076K plus A2 times minus 92.924K. So let's solve for A1 using Kramer's rule. Bring this over to the column associated with A1 and divide by the determinant of our matrix here. This times this is zero, and then minus this times this is 240. This times this is minus 92.924K, and then minus a minus 1.076K gives me a plus. And it turns out to be equal to minus 2.613 times 10 to the minus 3. From our first equation, we have that A1 plus A2 is equal to zero, so A2 is a negative of A1. So let me just get the value real quickly as plus 2.613 milli. Put this together now for our solution. So we've got A1 times e to the minus S1t plus A2 e to the minus S2t. And we can plug in the values of S1 and S2. As we've shown earlier in, in the chapter, if we write this as the reciprocal, in other words, 1 over 1.076k, which turns out to be 929 microseconds, and the reciprocal of this turns out to be 10.42 microseconds. We can interpret this exponential in the sense that this term will die out in five time constants. So this is about one millisecond. So in five milliseconds, this term will be gone. And this term here will be gone roughly uh, 50 or 60 microseconds. Now our current was equal to zero for t less than zero. And then we have this expression for t greater than zero, but the current in the inductance cannot jump instantaneously. So we have the equality at t equals zero two very different time constants here. This time constant is much, much smaller than this one. So as we begin to progress with time, this term is going to go from uh, basically being one times this to eventually being zero when this reaches about five time constants. While all that's going on, this pretty much hasn't changed. So you have roughly this value of minus 2.613. Take a look at this with uh, SPICE. The original SPICE program has a switch built in that's only usable at t equals zero. I'll show you how to use that. Take our RLC circuit, give our theven in here, L and C, have an initial condition of zero current and 12 volts. We get a title, call this the overdamped RLC natural response. We have R theven in between nodes one and zero, 4.7 K. We have the value of L between nodes one and two is 50 millihenries, And then the capacitor between two and zero with a value of 0.2 microfarads. Now, the way we use this switch in SPICE is to give an initial condition with the L and the C. And this is called IC equal to zero and IC equal to 12. Use dot probe to get a graphical output. And then now we got to pick our transient analysis terms here. Let's go to about five time constants of the larger of the two tau's that we have. So about five milliseconds. I'm going to divide this by 2000 because I'm going to be doing some zooming on the parts of our curve. So let me give a lot more data points here. And then we're going to start the simulation at t equals zero, and then we're going to make the ceiling step the same as the print step. Again, I'll explain in, in chapter eight of 202 why we're doing this. It has to do with uh, numerical error and distortion. Here's my output. I plotted the current really in the capacitor, any component uh, in the series combination will get the same results. But you can see that this dips down, comes back up again. Now let's just zoom in on this part of it right here. I got 2,000 data points total. This zooming in would be something, uh, maybe, I don't know, a quarter or so of the total points that I've got here. So I've got quite a few data points. Look at the first uh, 500 microseconds of this. What you're seeing is this term doesn't change very much in the first 50 microseconds. So it looks like about minus 2.613. But this term is changing rapidly in that same interval of time. It's really adding this term to this one. And so we're pulling the value back up here. And eventually this term dies out and we're left with just this term. And as T approaches uh, five time constants, we'll then go back to zero. This is the shape of a overdamped natural response.